What's up, guys? Welcome back to Teens of Queens. Today, we're going to be talking about different uh, topics, like the Trevor May signing, James McCann rumors, starting pitch, non-tenders, and the winter meetings coming up this week. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Teens of Queens, and let's go, Mets. Starting off, Trevor May became a New York Mets this week. The Mets inked their uh, former Twins reliever to a two-year, $15.5 million deal. I'm going to give this to Mike to see his opinion on this one. Yeah, Bubba, this is a really great signing here. Uh, we were able to get him on a relatively good deal over the past three years. He's put up pretty good numbers um, in a fairly easy division, but he's been in, in playoff spots. Seems like he's really going to fit well into the New York climate. Um, he's a Twitch streamer with a big personality. Um, our bull, We need bullpen help. Uh Batantis having a down year and up, he's a big question mark. Familia really hasn't shown too much exciting stuff the past two years. Diaz last year, but it was pretty bad in 2019. And we really don't know if Lugo is going to be in the rotation and bullpen next year. So we'll have to see about that. But I think Trevor May is going to fit in really well as um, one of those big guys in uh, high leverage situations. So we'll have to see how it goes, but uh, happy to see that Trevor May is going to be repping the orange and blue next year. What are your guys' thoughts? Um, I think you nailed it on the head. Uh, I think you said it pretty well. I think we have um, we have a good deal with him. We got him on a good two-year deal, a reasonable contract. He'll be a great part of our bullpen. We knew going into this offseason we need a little more bullpen help. We've been building on it since the 2018 year where we had a terrible year out of our bullpen, so I think it was a much-needed signing. I'm glad we got him early on in the year so no one else could snatch him. He also mentioned in his press conference he had the other day that uh, the, our pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner, who was his pitching coach in Minnesota, was a big factor in him joining the New York Mets. So I think him and uh, Hefner will work very well together. Um, they had a lot of success. He mentioned that they, they talked a lot of things over after they had a he had an outing of the bullpen, what they liked, what they didn't like. So I think uh, they will work very well together. So I think um, those two will really click together, and I think he'll have a lot of success in New York. He he has the personality for New York, and I think he can handle the big spots. As he said, he feeds off that type of stuff. So um, any any other thoughts on that, guys? Oh, yeah, I had something. You just look at Trevor Mann, his personality that he has. Uh, Twitch streams as he plays video games, talk to fans. Um, the success he's had on the mound. And just like you said, Tim, Jeremy Hefner being the pitching coach played a big influence in him signing with the Mets. Also, he knew to have Steve Cohen was also big. In the past few years, you don't really see guys saying that the owner played a big part in them signing with the team. Usually it's you know, different guys, the climate, the fans. He mentioned all that stuff, but mentioning the owners, a new thing that we're seeing, and it's nice to see that a lot of guys respect Cohen and that he's, you know, known around the league as somebody who's ready to win and, like he said, a really big mess man that wants to win himself. Any other thoughts? No, I think it was said perfectly. It's going to be a real good addition for this team. Yeah, I also agree. I think we nailed it. Uh, I think Steve Cohen, Jeremy Hefner, they definitely impacted his decision on signing with the Mets, especially this early in the off season. Uh, he's a pretty big free agent, and you usually see free agents wait till like win- uh, winter meetings that start soon to sign, and he just got the deal done immediately. So yeah, um, I think we nailed everything on that topic. All right, so on to the next topic. Earlier this week. James McCain was rumored to be pursued aggressively by the New York Mets. Um, said he was potentially going for a four-year deal, or that's what he was going to receive. Uh, the former all-star catcher that played for the White Sox this past year, or past few years, um, would be a nice fit for the Mets, I think, in my opinion, as they are looking for a catcher to get the bulk of the playing time. During. I'm going to pass one on to Tim to see what his thoughts are on this. So uh, I think this is a like, this would be a great addition for the New York Mets as obviously well, we didn't we do not have a catcher currently right now we aren't not gonna get uh, Wilson Ramos back so I think James McCann is the no brainer to go after this off season 
Um, he's had a lot of success these past two years in Chicago as he was an all-star for the first time in 2019 in his seven-year career. Um, and this year, he undoubtedly would have been an all-star as well if there was all-stars named as he almost put up uh, a 900 OPS, which you don't see too much nowadays out of catchers. So I think uh, this would be a great addition for the New York Mets. Um, he works well with pitchers. He's definitely worked on his defense these past few years. Um, he controls the run game decently well. He's a great framer, and I think he'll work well with our pitching staff we already have. So uh, what do you think of this, uh, Mike? James McCann's an overall good fit. We obviously need a catcher. Um, overall, the past few years with Wilson Ramos, he hasn't been getting it done defensively, and I think our pitchers have suffered from it. Um, someone in the White Sox rotation, like Lucas Giolito, has said that James McCann's a really good battery mate to have, and I think he'd fit perfectly here. Obviously, there's the way better option on the market with JT Real Muto, but he's money and if we're more interested in someone like George Springer or Trevor Bauer then I think going with the cheaper option is the better play especially since um McCann's he's he's not a bad catcher at all he's probably a top 15 catcher in the league he put out he's put up good offensive numbers the past two years for a catcher and four years is something that's questionable to give to him especially like Francisco Alvarez, who's probably three years away. But um, if it gets the deal done for what he's probably going to get, I wouldn't mind it for four years. So if anyone else has any thoughts, you can go ahead and jump in. I'd just like to say how the catching market is kind of thin this year. Um, I mean, two of the best catchers options are JT Romuto and uh, James McCann. JT was kind of rumored around going to the Mets, um, but his asking price may be too high for the team, and James McCann would definitely be a nice option. You look at the White Sox, they signed one of the best catchers in baseball last year, Osmani Grandal, and that tandem was one of the best in baseball, in my opinion, Grandal and um, McCann, so, and he still put up great offensive numbers as he wasn't even the starting catcher for the majority of the time, and um, to be honest, it would really be a good signing. They're also rumored to Yadier Molina and had talks with him uh, potentially. So we'll see what goes down. The Mets are definitely looking for a catcher, and I would not be surprised if James McCann was on the top of their list. Yeah, so just to uh, put a quick overview on that topic, I think overall James McCann would be a great fit. Uh, as uh, Mike said earlier, I think four years might be a little too much. Like It's a little more than I would want to put on the contract, but if that's what puts us on top of his uh, radar – i definitely do that if that means getting him, um, especially since his uh, asking price per year has went down. It's, he's uh, The projected contract he's projected to get is around a $36 million a year over four years. That's what's been uh, reported around the league. So that would be around $9 million a year. So that would be a, a steal of a price in my opinion. Um, it would be a per- perfect bridge into uh, our best catching prospect in our farm system, Francisco Alvarez, as uh, Mike mentioned earlier, so I think it'd be a great um, bridge for McCann over to Alvarez, and then the new generation starts. So, if, if anyone has any final thoughts on that topic before we move on, please uh, say. If not, we can move on. I think with that, we'll move on to the next topic. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're moving on to the next topic, and a lot of good thoughts came out of that. The one that we just went over. Next topic that we got on our radar is, um, or on our list, is starting pitching. In the free agent market market this year, there's a lot of starters on the names. And the name that's really standing out so far for the Mets has been rumored by many sources is uh, Jake Odorizzi from Minnesota. So potentially Jake Odorizzi could end up on the Mets or obviously any other team, but they might be a little bit aggressive on uh, Odorizzi right now. So I'll hand this over to Mike to see what his thoughts are. So I I actually uh, like the idea of Odorizzi. As uh, we saw with Trevor May a few days ago, he ended up signing here because of Jeremy Hefner, our pitching coach, extremely well in Minnesota. And apparently, Odorizzi is a big fan of Hefner as well. So I think fit-wise, he fits in the rotation pretty perfectly behind uh, Jacob deGrom and Marcus Stroman. Eventually, when Noah Syndergaard comes back, he'd be a great four-starter to have 
we're not going after someone like Trevor Bauer, obviously. Um, we definitely need starting pitching. Last year, we really struggled. Uh, we lost. We're losing Rick Torcello and Mike, who were obviously not the great off-season additions we hoped last year. Um, Steven Matz really struggled this year. After uh, he had a pretty uh, surprisingly well 2019 season, but um, there are other options besides Odorizzi. We could go get a Masahiro Tanaka or. Uh, James Paxson, who pitched with the Yankees last year. They're both good mid-rotation options that we could pivot to if we miss out on Bauer. I like uh, Odorizzi overall. I think we could get him on a two-, three-year deal and uh, call it a day. With our bullpen now, I'm more confident that we don't need the big starting pitching, but um, I think we're in a good spot right now where we could add one or two arms to that rotation after... uh, having DeGrom, Stroman, and probably David Peterson locked into that rotation right now. If anyone else has any. Um, yeah, I think you you mentioned a lot of pitchers that could, the Mets could definitely pivot to if they miss out on, obviously, the best pitcher in the starting uh, in the free agency in Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer's shown a lot of interest in a lot of teams, so it might be hard to get him to come to the Mets. And we also missed out on uh, for, uh, one of the better starting pitchers in this free agency and Charlie Morton who signed earlier this off season before anyone else did. So I would think about signing him but he went to he went to the Braves, so um it was tough. But yeah, I think you nailed it there. I think Odorizzi would be a great addition. I think Hefner um would be a deciding factor in his decision. And I think yeah. I think Orizzi would be a great fit in New York, great middle of the rotation. We definitely need someone to fill in the spot for Syndergaard as he won't be back till like mid July and stuff. So, or earlier, hopefully mid July at latest. We don't know yet, but hopefully we can get Orizzi. He'd be a great addition to New York. If anyone else, any final thoughts, please do. Well, you look at starting pitcher market, as I said before, a lot of stars on the market, a lot of. Oh, excuse me. A lot of, um, you know, you have Trevor Bauer, reigning Cy Young winner in the NL. Great season. Then you have, like, the Tanakas, the older Rizzies, the Paxtons. Um, I feel like the Mets are definitely going to be aggressive in the starting market. Uh, Arms off the board. Mike Miner's off the board to Kansas City. So I think the starting market, the starting pitcher market, is going to be the um, top uh, top tier where a lot of guys are going to be uh, signing soon and it's going to be moving. To move fast. Once it starts, it's going to start going down like dominoes, in my opinion, for starters. So if anybody else has anything to add to that, um, go ahead. I think that. Yeah, I agree with that statement there. And um, the Mets, could, I think they've. There's been a report that they showed interest in uh, Corey Kluber, who, I think back just a few years ago, was one of the best pitchers in baseball. But the last few years, he's obviously had injury problems. That's something you have to weigh. Um, I think he'd be a good fit as a low-risk, high-reward option. Um, he's from the Northeast. He lives in the Northeast. Another guy that you could potentially go after is someone like a Taiwan Walker, who had a pretty good year this year after being traded from Seattle to Toronto, or even a Garrett Richards, who's with San Diego. Another interesting guy could be uh, Chris Archer, who... Uh, was formerly the ace of the Tampa Bay Rays, who got dealt to the Pirates a few years ago and what looks like an awful deal for Pittsburgh. But he's coming off a big injury. But in the past, he showed he could be a really good pitcher. So that might be someone we could consider on a lesser deal or a minor league deal. But other than that, I think uh, I think we've covered a lot of the pitching options that we have right now still a lot out there and uh, it'll be interesting to see how the pitching market uh, comes together over the next few weeks and months with that I think we'll move on to the next topic so take it away from here alright guys a lot of good points made there a lot of names thrown out there Um, next topic up is uh, this past week the tender deadline um, obviously passed and one of the notable names is Jason Sharif Lifted a reliever out of the Mets' pen from last year. And um, it was kind of a shocker to many. But 
it looks like the Mets will be in the market for a lefty reliever. I'm going to hand this over to somebody who wants to take it over. I'll take this over. Yeah, I definitely think Chase and Shreve was definitely a questionable tender. But um, I think the reason why the Mets did this one is because um, if they're looking to get a big uh, left-hander reliever out of this free agency, like Brad Hand or Justin Wilson, uh, we won't have any room for Chase and Shreve. And unfortunately, he's out of minor league options. So we'd just be stuck with him. And I don't think we want to... I don't think he's a part of our future bullpen, so we had to do something with him. So I think there's a strategical um, thought behind this uh, non-tender to Shreve. And the other names listed were Paul Seawald, who we've had for since 2012 when we drafted him, and he's been around the major league since 2017. So uh, he's gone. And then Ariel Horado, who we trade for at the deadline for uh, for just a player to be named later, Steve Villanueva. Uh, and then uh, Nick Tr- Tropiano, uh, we we claimed him off waivers a few weeks ago, so he his stint with the Mets was kind of short. So Shreve was the only big name in that non-tender there, but uh, I think there's definitely a strategical uh, thought behind that. So I'll hand this over to anyone else who wants to t- touch on this topic. And yeah, yeah. So um, with this non-tender deadline, a lot of people expected uh, Stephen Matz or. Robert Gazelman to be non-tendered, but uh, they were both tendered contracts. As for Matt, he was given a deal worth around $5.2 million, but it's non-guaranteed. So if the Mets choose to release him after he may have a poor something, they'd only be on the hook for about $800,000, and they could just release him. As for Robert Gazelman, he's not going to make that much in arbitration. They probably see he, has, he still has some upside. And he, had, I believe he has minor league options still. So, I th- think that's what that's why they chose to keep those two with the organization. And you can never go wrong pitching depth. Throughout the course of a 100 season, you're going to see injuries. It's bound to happen. So to have those two as depth, it's it's a positive. I mean, they obviously struggle. They've had injury problems in the past, but I, I still see they have some upside. Um. So, as for Shreve, I mean, he, had, he he looked pretty good this year. It's upsetting letting him go, but if we're going to go after another lefty reliever, there's really no spot for him, as Tim said prior. So, I think with, that's pretty much all I have to say with the non-tenders. And also, you could add to the non-tenders, like you were saying, Stephen Matz, Robert Zellman. Um the thing with the depth last year that, or this past season that Mike was also pointing out, the Mets had a lot of trouble, and Luis Rojas um, dealt with a lot of problems with how to pick and choose who to start in some games. You saw a combination of sometimes a Walker Lockett, Seth Luton, Gizelman, um, David Peterson, Mets, like Porcello. It was Waka, DeGrom. I mean, DeGrom's obviously the ace and best pitcher in baseball, but... DeGrom missed one start, and it kind of just, the rotation, it was just real looking, to be honest. You saw a lot of guys in there who were not supposed to be in the rotation in the beginning of the season. So, like they were saying, getting this depth back, I think, is very important. Zellman are both guys that have uh, had success at the major league level at some point in some way. So if anybody else wants to add to this, they can. If not, we'll just move on to the next topic. I think that's all we have for that topic, and for we have one final topic we gotta touch on, and then we gotta wrap it up. All right. So the last topic, like Tim said, is the winter meetings. Our winter meetings start up this week. Should be exciting to um, listen into. It is rumored to be a very, as you know, many people thought it would be because of the coronavirus. But um, hopefully, the Mets could go out there and get some uh, nice pieces to add to this team. Maybe some big fish, George Springer. Rumored to be on one of the top guys on the Mets list. Obviously, Trevor Bauer up there. James McCann, like we were talking about, Jacob Rizzi. So let's see if these guys find homes this week. We're um, coming up. So whoever wants to touch on this, I'll let them do that. Yeah. Winter meetings are usually a really exciting time in the baseball off season, But this year, it's probably not going to be that exciting, to be quite honest. Um Last year, we saw all the big names sign at this time. We saw Anthony Rendon, 
Steven Strasburg and Garrett Cole all signed humongous contracts at the winter meetings last year. But this year, sadly, the market's depressed, and we're not going to see the movement like we have in the past. We've been known to make some pretty big signings during the winter meetings as they uh, signed Curtis Granderson one year at the winter meetings. They gave David Wright his extension at the winter meetings one year. But um, as Bubba said, the people look out for someone like a George Springer, who uh, the Mets have shown interest in him. I think something could get done there maybe within the next month, maybe maybe this week if stuff uh, starts to heat up. But uh, we could also be in, on some trade. Uh, there hasn't been that many trades involved with the Mets, uh, trade rumors involved with the Mets lately, but uh, I think trade talks may heat up. Um, maybe the Indians start uh, getting the wheels turning on the Francisco Lindor trade rumors. Because it's inevitable, they're probably going to trade him this off season. They just don't have the money to give him the extension that he wants. So you may start seeing some rumors revolving around Francisco Lindor potentially coming to their teams. So it should be an interesting week. Maybe not as interesting as past winter meetings, but I, I think it'll be a fun time. Yeah, I definitely think he'll definitely be slower. But this is where I think. Steve Cohen can uh, accelerate the the movement of winter meetings as other teams might not be as uh, quick to hop on players uh, as he's shown as he signed Trevor May very early. So I think uh, we will definitely be aggressive at winter meetings as possible as we can. So I think uh, a few names that we should be looking at are George Springer, obviously like Trevor Bauer, Jake Odorizzi, uh, McCann, all these big names we have to look at. But... Um, I think the names we mentioned earlier in the uh, while talking is the names we should be really focusing on. But yeah, that's all I have to say pretty much. So if there's any final thoughts before we wrap this all up, uh, please speak. And kind of like what Mike was adding to, um, Steve, this may be a key opportunity for Steve Cohen to really show top free agents or just free agents in general um, that New York is a place to play. And I hope a lot of free agents... Um, take that into account um like trevor may was saying during his interview the other day he was talking to about half a dozen teams in the league and once the mets stepped in that gap just grew larger and larger from the rest of the pack so that's really nice to see as big influence on where free agents might want to play this upcoming season and for seasons in the future all right it's, it's an exciting time to be a mets fan I mean, you can expect. I I I fully believe the Mets are going to add at least one star caliber player this offseason, maybe even two. Um, so it's something to look forward to over the next two months before the spring training gets underway. But uh, it's it's an exciting time to be a Mets fan, and we're here for it. Yeah, so that looks like it's all the time we have for today. We covered a lot of topics, gave a lot of analysis, a lot of opinions. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Um, we have one final question that you guys can answer in the comment section below. If there's one free agent you guys could sign to the uh, Mets this offseason, who would you want and why? Uh, we want to know your thoughts. So if there's any final thoughts from you guys, I think it's time to wrap it up. And, yeah. Thanks for listening. Hope you all have a nice week coming up. And uh, thanks. Thanks. But th- thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Teens and Queen. Teens of Queens and um let's go Mets baby let's go Mets thank you for watching everyone